We want to introduce you now to a former cartel member talking about the crisis at our southern border. Jesse O'Connor is with me, and sir, good morning to you, and thank you for your time. You've asked good us morning. not to reveal your location, and we will honor that for the sake of this appearance and interview, so good morning to you. Why did you first join a cartel? Money, greediness. Hmm. I had a business at the time, and uh, they approached me there at the restaurant, and uh, they made it so easy for me to you know, hook up with them. And one thing led to another. And uh, they started crossing uh, the cocaine all the way to my doorsteps. Mm. So, Jesse, it was drugs you were dealing in, not human beings, right? No, sir. I was, I was uh, completely dealing with uh, cocaine. Okay. Totally cocaine. Okay. And how many years did that go on? Uh, I would say about two, three years. Why'd you get out? I got busted, I got hit, I was, I got set up, and uh, that stopped everything right there. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure you regret all that, I'm assuming. Uh, if you don't, tell, <laughs> tell, tell yes, me sir. now, right? I mean, change your life. Uh, now you're a restaurant totally. owner, and, and you say the problem at the border was entirely predictable. How come? Uh, you know, going back with these people that, uh, you know, they're controlling right now because they're very opportunistic. You make them, it's like a chess game. You make a move, and that gives them a chance to make their move. Uh, you know, they're, they see all these people crossing. They eye young girls. They eye little kids. And, uh, the, you know, the, 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 the guy that I used to work for before, he owned several, several shops, several in Boydstown, you know, the red zone, what they call it in Mexico. You see these little girls, they get nurtured and they grow up and they work in their, in their shops, you know, which are, uh, they're bars, they're, uh, you know, dancing girls. And, and that's the, what they, they buy girls from state to state and they pass them from state to state. They start them young at 12 or nine, whatever, you know, age they get them at, but they nurture them. They, they, they uh, put them to work at a very young age and then the girls will, will make a living according to what they look like, the representation they have. And by that time, they don't want to get out anymore. They're used to that life. Wow, that's sad. That's all human trafficking and destruction of human life there, too. Uh, there, this yes, is sir. an anonymous cartel member who spoke with Fox Digital. I, I, I don't think any of this is going to surprise you, but I want to read it for you, okay, Jesse? No one wants to work on anything else right now. Everyone wants to work with the migrants because you can make a lot of money from it these days, and it's easy work. Right now, it's more profitable to smuggle migrants than to traffic bricks of cocaine and with less risk if you get caught. Think about that. Wow. Yes. You see the draw. Yes. You see the attraction. You were pulled into it. I want you to listen now to a clip from the President of the United States from this week, okay? This is on Tuesday. Watch. Have you done everything you can do with executive authority? Or is there more you could do? Absolutely. You've done all I can do. Just give me the power. I've asked for the very day I got in office. Give me the border patrol. Give me the people, give me the people, the judges. Give me the people who can stop this and make it work right. Jesse, I'm not asking for a political answer on this. I just want you to help us understand if that makes sense to you. <laughs> Not at all. Nothing's been done. I don't care what President Biden says at the moment. It's, things are still the same. There's nothing changed. Everything will run in the same through the very first day. There's, uh, you, you, you know, he, he has a power to do it. I just don't understand why he's not doing it. There's some, the drugs, the people, you know, the, the cartels are, are, are coming in. I mean, they're just taking advantage of every situation of these border crossings. You know, you've seen the amount of fentanyl that's been coming across. I mean, it's really gotten big throughout the United States. Mm -hmm. So. Exactly uh, right. You know, I, I just see. Yeah. I, just I want to ask you a question. I don't think it's asked a lot. I, I don't know how you're going to answer this. 
But what if U.S. officials work with Mexican officials to take these cartel leaders off the table? What do you think about that? It can be done. It can be done. But, I mean, you know, it's, you're talking about this cartel people. They have a lot of money. They can buy you. They're, you can say they're Soros, you know, they buy people out. And I don't care, how, you know, if you're in the government, if you're a senator, if you're, if you're a big man in government, they can still buy you out. And then they know where you're at. You don't know where they're at. And that's the problem. Mm -hmm. And they know every inch of the miles and miles of our southern border. Jesse, thank you for they sharing do, your sir. yeah. Thank you for sharing your story. We're going to stay in contact with you, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, to thank you. Yes, yeah, so, so we can learn together from you. Thank you, Jesse, and good luck to you. I'm Steve Ducey. I'm Brian Kilme. And I'm Ainsley Earhart. And click here to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page to catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis.